I remember when we were strong. Back in the days before King Tenebre and his royal guard, and the people of Amosran took up their own arms for fun and profit. Before all that, here was just us, the Viridian Outriders. We kept the roads and trails safe and secure, with homes and forts scattered about and locales civilized and not. Time passed, and we have been replaced. And yet, I hear the rumblings and murmurs of the roads being less safe than they had been. Monsters sniffing around in smaller towns and magic acting oddly. Who knows? Maybe we'll be needed again. Hello, and welcome back to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I remain your GM. Today, the Outriders investigate the apartment of Yakov Altrade, talk down Dieter, and formulate a plan. Thank you to our backers, Carl, Keith, and Elliot for their support. If you like what you hear, consider donating to us at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia. Maybe even try checking out a couple of the other shows on the network. But with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. God damn it! No, I'm just, uh, I'm just making fun of Griffin. making noise. Okay. I'm just making fun of Griffin. Somebody oh, what has did to. I do? It's always fun to make fun of Griffin. I literally was told on uh, uh, I I went on a date and a date uh, a date and a date? that's uh, my you didn't dates. go on a raisin. Can I can I tell my damn story without you no. two chuckle fucks chiming in every <laughs> fucking second? Is that an actual question? That's what a podcast is, Griffin. I went on a date and uh, met my dates uh, like one of one of my dates' very good friends growing up and uh, that person's fiance. And um, a conversation was brought up of like, uh, uh, and they said uh, to my dates, uh, you told me once that the type of person that you want to be with, with someone who you could bully. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. This has taken a left and I, turn. And I looked at her and I went, I'm sorry. <laughs> and there was, it was elaborated upon a little bit. And uh-huh. it was said that like someone who could take it and dish it back as well. Like that is not the same thing. <laughs> That's what I said. And it's like, I'm not apologizing for my reaction that you wanted someone bullyable as you're <laughs> what? Hey, bullyable what? people make the best friends. Yeah, Justin. Are you okay, Justin? Hey, no. Justin, you want to <laughs> do you want to tell the good people? I, do you want to tell the good people I, about the time you merely made me cry during playing while playing Smash Bros? Uh, I don't know what I did. I was just being me. I was being Jigglypuff, right? <laughs> Floating around, taunting, yeah. playing Super Evade Bros. I don't know what what made you so upset. You main Jigglypuff. That's enough. You biggly puffed me almost into the grave. Well, that's the point of the game, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, the real grave, not the virtual grave. <laughs> that's not the Super the Smash grave. My game, I'm hey, afraid. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. We have discussed this on this podcast, so I feel the need to revisit it. Hey. Mm. So that Super Mario Brothers movie kind of slaps. Yeah? I have not seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Kind of slaps. You know how much it slaps? How much? How, m- how much? I saw it twice. On my birthday. Wow. <laughs> Twice in 24 hours. Twice in 10 hours, my dude. Like, <laughs> like there was a dinner and drinks break, and then I went right back in. Like, yeah, I oh saw you God. in the middle of that. You did. You you did experience me in the midst of the Mario adventure. Yeah. It was not a planned adventure to go twice, uh, yet it happened. Uh, no, I took uh, the JJ mm-hmm. to see the Mario movie. And he was overjoyed and loved it because it is very bright and very shiny and very funny and very fast. Um, Love it. It's great. And it's a good time. And then uh, I went with uh, another person, another mm-hmm. date later in the mm-hmm. evening. Two and dates, I, one podcast. <laughs> I may have taken a bit of a snooze. Yeah. Don't snooze during movies. Because I had seen it already that day. And I was... <laughs> They don't see it again. A bit tipsy. <laughs> she wanted to see it really I badly. It. I get it. Tipsy, tipsy second movie, especially in the same day. You're in a dark yeah. room, and comfy chairs. 
that no. that uh, interstitial meeting with Ryan and I was at Ice Tier Brewing. Yes. And you know they don't go halfway on the ABV. No, they don't. They sure don't. I stayed up through the Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch movie. Despite <laughs> how much I wanted to snooze, I did not because that, I have principles. That sounds you like have, a you problem, my guy. You, you, you have peaches? Is that what you said? Peaches, 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 peaches. That's all I wanted. I haven't I just seen wanted it, Justin but, uh, but I, to do his I, Jack Black. Uh, I, I am on TikTok. Jack Almost Black is having a constantly. hell of a week. Between the Mandalorian and and uh, Ben Bowser, Spoilers. I don't think that's a spoil- like that was all over TikTok. That, that man's all- a, that Jack Black's in Mando. Yeah, huh? yeah. Who's his Spoilers. wife? Who's his wife? Chase. Spoilers. He's a king of a planet. Uh, yeah, no. So he, Griffin. I don't Star Wars, so I don't. I know. Care. That, that, I so, like, exactly. so this is a fun game. This is a fun game, Griffin. Oh God. <laughs> what what female celebrity was Jack Black married to? Or um, getting married to in an episode of The Mandalorian. Florence Pugh. No. Mm. Good guess. A I don't good think guess. that was a good guess. <laughs> All right, we'll go more generic. Think, Scarlett think Johansson. Less actor, more celebrity. Oh. Lady Gaga. Closer. That Very cl- <laughs> that, pretty close. That's a good one guess. Pretty close. Yes. One more. Actually, actually, if Lady Gaga showed up in an episode of Star Wars, I would be like, yeah, that seems right. Ryler Swift. No. <laughs> Lizzo. <laughs> Lizzo. <laughs> and I have not seen the episode. Okay, very but good. But the clips I have seen are phenomenal. They look like, despite the age gap, they look very natural together. Jack Black and Lizzo? Hell yeah. yeah. That works. Yeah. Jizzo. <clears throat> okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I took Justin, off my headphones for Justin, one second. Him, Justin, don't make him repeat it. I didn't say anything. That was that was all Justin. Hey Ryan, can I get a clean take of uh, whatever the fuck you just said? <laughs> of whatever the fuck I just said. All right, I'm gonna take my. That's head what you needed this time. Jizzo. <laughs> 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 Well played, well played. For the listeners at home, Ryan mimed saying it into the mic, but did not do it until Griffin put his headphones back on. Solid, solid play, Albrecht. Thank you, Meaning, thank you. Griffin, you got got, sucker. Ay, Ay. You got, see, look how bullyable I am. <laughs> you got, you got jizzoed. Let's right. start the show. Let's play some D&D. <laughs> Three of you and Ignis leave the administration building of Calvin and Cat's Corral. It's a short walk over to the barn. Uh, you know that somewhere in there is some kind of mechanism that will get you into a, uh, for lack of a better term, an apartment that one Yakov Altrade has been building in Calvin and Cat's Corral. Do you do anything on the way there as you uh, uh, cross Jillian Junebug's jitter stage? Does Katie relay any any sightings, any Magicatronic sightings on our way there? Because Katie and Dieter are working together now. Oh, that's right. We left him in the um, yeah in the bunker, as it were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dieter. As far as you are aware, Dieter is still operating from the Outer World Fair. Yeah, but um, he and Katie could talk. Yes, well, and, and he has moved the Magicatronics oh, elsewhere. Thank you. That's so right. the June bugs are still, of course, in effect as a means of, uh, you know, good faith and making sure that she can continue to keep an eye on things. Uh, but the rest of the Magicatronics have been moved. Arabin does a heck in Caligan disguise just in case. Sure. <laughs> can we get like a, a time check? Like how many hours from dawn? You've got about two hours left. Okay. Okay. So enough time that we can, in fact, fuck around. We can fuck around a little bit still before we find out. Yeah. 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 Scooter. (laughs) We don't know if the Buddha scooter works during night mode or if it's lit up. Actually, I can see. Is it lit up? Does the Buddha scooter have flashing LEDs to light up the night sky? 
Um, there's a couple of work lights. It's not the the artful bulb or you know magic illumination placement. It is um, clearly something for safety in case somebody was working late. But uh, nothing. And, that o- way. and only a couple no. of them work, and the ones that do work flicker and flash. And mm-hmm. there's like one really good one that no perception is required to know. That's like people fight over that light. It's the good light. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, trying yeah. to be dramatic, but the booter scooter was the only time I felt alive in a long time. <laughs> that is quite dramatic, actually. Yeah. Uh, and that's saying something for you, Arabin. Oh, well, let's just keep going. Do you Maybe understand? I can build us like a miniature one back at uh, back at Baring. Do you think it you won't could be do? The same. You could build a little like maybe out of like um some some leftover scraps of wood like just a little one right a diorama for the desk or whatever and then That'd maybe you, could you put like um you could put little tiny um booter scooters on it and the the coaster part right it could go up and down and around maybe hakia could do it or maybe Ooh. even um do you all remember the fingerboards the what <laughs> The fingerboards, like you would get a little little fingerboard, and you could yeah. like put some wheels on the bottom of it, and you could kind of roll it around the deck. Am I too old? Oh no, I maybe no, I, my no, age, I, yeah. we we no, we sold those at the uh, at, at my folks' shop when I was growing up. Yeah, I'm not yes. into cutesy things. It's just look, you either you either fuck with the fingering or you don't. It's it is what it is. But you could do like flips and stuff. It was it was quite neat. It's quite cool. Like you could play with it during class or on your desk, right? Yeah, little plank wheelers. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I need to write down that Ryan has introduced tech decks into this <laughs> world, mainly for revenge later. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You saved me from calling the miniature roller coaster the booty scooty. <laughs> <laughs> the booty is of scooties. <laughs> The boot scooter. No, it's please. It's the booty scooty. I'm just just for boots. I make a thing that takes my boots, my work boots, from the shop to my bedroom, and it's the boot scooter. Does it clean them on the way? No, it just scoots them. <laughs> <laughs> Does what it says on the tin. Only scoots. Singular function, scoots. It only moves one boot at a time, too. It's the boot scooter. <laughs> this is the next logical evolution in uh, the, th- the things we created, though, because we did start with treadmill and walking desk. Started with treadmill, walking desk, gonna end with gun. <laughs> G- pass gun, gonna turn Ignis into a tank. The boot yeah. blaster. <gasps> Shoots boots. <laughs> the okay. boot shooter! <laughs> You better scoot out of the way of the booter shooter. The booter shooter. I'm going to put a fucking cannon on Ignis that shoots exclusively boots. <laughs> All right, this bit ends at booter shooter. <laughs> None of this is usable. <laughs> I, I, you underestimate me. You will not be surprised at how many bits make it into the show where all I have done is edit out the point where one of us says, this is unusable. (laughs) (laughs) Chase, you monster. Keep keep going. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I'm planning on it. You get to the barn, and it is, as you left it, many empty cages line the walls. There's nothing in here of note that you can see but you also didn't really look around a lot last time either so uh, why don't you all tell me what you're doing because you don't know where the entrance to this apartment is it's just somewhere in here yeah i'm imagining there's some sort of like secret switch Mm -hmm. or lever some mechanism that'll get tripped to reveal like a ladder or a staircase or something. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cruise around kind of the, the interior of the structure, um, looking for anything kind of snuckily, sneakily snucked in with the, the architecture. Okay, cool. Um, Arabin, what are you going to do? Uh, he's going to look for a bookcase. Cause that's the only thing he knows that could in a hold the switch. It- Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, for your barn books. Exactly. Uh, no, he'll uh, there's barn start. Books. If are there what what is in this barn? Are there are there hay bales or just doing a quick cursory look around? The biggest things are like you know cages and whatnot. You can see 
Um, that it looks like there's a few crates that could contain like animal care stuff um, near the entryway side where you initially entered the first time. There is a small cafe kind of area centered around some of the uh, the animal exhibits. Okay, okay. So this is I was thinking the wrong thing. This is like functionally a barn. Correct. This okay, is this fun- is not like aesthetically like, here's the fun it, barn and you can do these both. three things. Okay. It is absolutely both. It is aesthetically a barn, but there is also like a place for like people to exist and be in here. Yeah, remember like, we animals? found that tip off that mm-hmm. Balolin was a supplier mm-hmm. and was going to probably bring them a bunch of weird shit. Yep. Arabin's going to check the cages to see if any of them open or sure. see if there's any thing tripped by that sounds good cecil what are you up to cecil is going to search for connections that we're trying to make so anything in the barn that could be fey related or Mm -hmm. seem of a different plane um and is kind of purposefully looking for i don't want to say otherworldly but something something that seems out of place or unnatural or something like that does that make sense yeah, absolutely. Unless anybody has anything else they would like to do, I want a straight investigation check from everybody. Oh, it stinks. That's a big nine for Harper. Okay. 17. 21. Thank okay. you, lads. I would um, like to find the doorway to the Feywild, please. I don't want to go to the Feywild. <laughs> Okay, let me pull up those Blinkrex stats again. Fuck, Uh-oh. no. <laughs> I'm not a druid this time, Chase, no. Erebin would for sure get sucked into a contract in the Feywild. <laughs> Within the first moments. Yeah. Erebin pulling a, a, a fucking John Constantine and making multiple warlock packs. <laughs> one with the Fey, one with a Fiend, and one with a Celestial. And all of them are unintentional. <laughs> And they all hate each other. Ha, huh, well, they live together. I don't know. Um, Three men and a baby. Yep, Arab is the baby. <laughs> Harper, you are, like, walking the wall and are just, like, pressing on anything that looks out of place. Like, this is a fairly, uh, I say fairly, brand new construction. Mm-hmm. Like, it still smells of paint and sawdust in here. Um, Everything is covered in that, like, very fine construction dust. And as you are examining everything, uh, you see Ignis get stuck. Oh, buddy. And he's, like, he's trying to, like, crawl up into a cage. And he's no. just kind of got, like, like stuck turtle. The You can hear stuff is, like, grinding on it oh, itself. And you just easy, get distracted easy. helping him. Come on. No. Ugh, hang on. I fish some motor oil out of my bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Grease him up to get him out of there. Motor oil implies the existence of motors. Okay, fine. Booter scooter oil. What do you want from me? <laughs> Working oil. Fucking eat my ass. <laughs> Artificer grease. <laughs> yeah, some halfling oil. <laughs> oh, Arabin, you have a 17. Correct. You were checking the cages. These cages are well built. You can tell that they are very clearly designed to hold a wide variety of creatures, but that also means they are not very well tailored to really any individual one. It, you're getting the impression that maybe this place was built kind of to hold a a rotating collection of critters. But beyond that, you're really not sure of what else might uh, these might be used for. But you also do not find the entrance. With a 21, Cecil, you are looking for something that is out of place. You do the round of uh, the cages and whatnot, and that looks pretty standard. As far as you can tell, there's not a whole lot of zoos, but you've probably been to one in your life, Mm -hmm. and this looks about on par with that. So you make your way over to that little snack stand. Um... And you're looking around there, trying to find anything. Um, and then there's a maintenance door, and you just open it up, and there are stairs that lead upstairs. Uh, but anyone like some fey nuts? Honestly, yeah, I'm what? peckish. Some fey nuts they're on sale over here. They, you know, they've got some fey nuts, right? It's all, it's all themed. 
Yeah, sprinkle a little salt on those. Those are great. You see sulfate? Oh, also here, uh, it's over here, right here. I found the door. Oh. Huh? The door. I found it. I found what? it. Door. It was just there. It was labeled. That's... Yeah. That's so boring. I... <laughs> Pop Ignis out of the cage, and we run. We we wander over. I towel them off. The stairs go up or down. Up. Oh, great. No. Ignis, buddy. We can do it. We lo- we can loaf Ignis at the base of the stairs. He's famously not great with stairs still. In a real world anecdote, friend of the show, Zan and Carlin, just mm-hmm. got like, they, they've they just recently adopted like a racing greyhound as like a rescue. And the dog can't do stairs because it's never seen stairs in its life. Oh. And they- so this is a real world thing of like, Ignis just doesn't know how to do stairs, guys. <laughs> but Ignis, Ignis too is still learning stairs. Mm-hmm. All right, we go up the stairs. You are met with a locked door. <sighs> Papa. <laughs> yep, I get, I get the picks out. Mm-hmm. These are honestly getting way more work than I ever thought they would. What did you think? That you would get them and you would use them and then have them and just... Well, really, it was like, you know, if you're going to make locks, you kind of need to know how they work. Oh, got it. Uh, 21. Oh, yeah. Um, right. It. Well, I will say, that was close Ooh. like that you can tell this is a well made piece of machinery here like yeah. it is a good lock i see hoppa kind of take a minute and the intricacies to go through the lock and as the door opens i immediately put my hand out in front of her and go hold on let's wait and i uh cast dancing lights and send the lights into the room mm-hmm. first um what do the lights look like when you cast them uh, just like white lights, or uh, they are. Um, they were clock faces before, right? Yeah, they were clock faces, like LED glow in the dark clock faces. <laughs> they're digital. Uh, <laughs> they're not digital. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because Cecil's old, mm-hmm. right? But they are RGB. <laughs> gamer watch. Gamer watch. Cecil uh, Styles is gamer watch. <laughs> I was, I cast, I was thinking like a Casio like digital display, but no, this is very good. I cast Cecil Styles Gamer Watch. You send the dancing lights into the room, and as the door opens, you are met with a cavernously empty apartment. The walls are lined with a same dark wood, just like the office was. The curtains are that same royal purple um, with a uh, gold kind of lining around the edge on these. There is no furniture that you can see. There are some nice built-ins in the wall. A couple of bottles of liquor up in there that uh, look absolutely, um, you know, expensive, if nothing else. That is what you're seeing from your vantage point. (sighs) Doesn't look too promising, does it? No, it doesn't, but I don't think there's going to be any alarms or traps if there's not much in here. He seems like a stunningly boring individual. For a guy running an amusement park, that's a little ironic. Yeah, it lacks a certain whimsy that you would expect. Yeah. Um, hey, Arabin, as we all walk into the room and start looking, I go, Arabin, when you think of the word whimsy, like, what springs to mind? For you, personally, what would you find whimsical? Maybe like a a unicorn or something. <laughs> okay, that's fair. that's pretty whimsical. I mean, uh, you put me on the spot there. I, I haven't really had to think about many whimsical things. Unicorns are fairly whimsical. Yeah, sunshine, yeah. sparkles, you name it. Okay, you don't find me whimsical. Not now, not now. Hmm. Fine, fine. Nasty. <laughs> Was I able to get Ignis up the stairs? Yes. Okay. Took some doing, but uh huh. Um, he's got the headlights on, mm-hmm. so I'm um, I'm I'm just gonna give this room the once over, kind of like it did downstairs. Okay. If y'all give me a minute, I can look for any magical things. Yeah, it's, that's fine. We've got some time, and this is probably the last place to look. So, all take right. you ten minutes and do that. We'll all start yeah. looking, and if there's anything that we go, mm, maybe we should wait. We'll we'll wait. Cool. Does that make Does that work, Chase? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and ritually cast Detect Magic with my little magnifying glass. Sure thing. 
Uh, yeah, you you cast uh, detect magic. Are the two of you doing anything while Harper is doing that? You said there were bottles. Yeah. Uh, Arabin's just gonna start lifting them, seeing if there's any buttons or switches. Good call. So the bottles are on these built-in wine rack in the foyer. There, it looks like it's the idea is like. You know, all trade could potentially welcome somebody in and, you know, grab a fine bottle off the wall and be able to entertain immediately. And these are very nice wines. Uh, some of them, like, don't even have labels and whatnot. Give me investigation at advantage. And I'll tell you why here in a second. I was a 19. Okay. Ooh. What was your not advantage roll? What was the other one? Uh, with the modifier, it would have been a five. Okay, perfect. So that's what you're doing. Uh, Cecil, what are you doing? I am looking for, again, anything fey, mm-hmm. or maybe, uh, is there anything that screams watch as well? Because that um, would that would kind yeah. of match up as well. Great question. So, so going through the built, if there's any drawers yeah. to open, we're opening drawers. Go we got for to do. It. Yeah, go ahead and roll me a- another investigation. Sounds good. Is it one big room or is it a series of rooms? There's a couple of different rooms. I'm letting all of this count for everything. Investigation is a 17. Okay, cool. Um, so, Arabin, you are having the hardest fucking time trying to find anything. Like, you're just pulling wine off the shelves like what is any of this it's not sticking uh cecil you are looking for you know things for watch things for the fey anything uh you're able to find a couple of places where you think things will go like just trying to map out in your head it's like okay If I was building my own secret apartment over a zoo, where would I put shit? (laughs) Um, And eventually you do find um, places where you think altars will go. Um, There is a window that is looking out towards the chapel. There is like a ready-made indent for a very fine altar to watch. There's another window that's looking out towards the tree that also seems to have kind of like a high bay thing going on that maybe you could put some Feywild artifacts up there. Um, And uh, this is clearly a work in progress. Any luck out there? I'm finding a lot of nothing. Uh, a couple places to sit. I could read a book here. Actually, that would actually be quite comfortable. Get some cushions. Harper, your spell pops. Mm-hmm. And this is when that advantage kicks in. Because you're not seeing a whole lot up here. You can see kind of like, again, the beginnings of maybe some other artificer work. Maybe Dieter's, for all you know. Sure. Um, But you do see one bit of abjuration magic. Ooh. On a bottle, in a bottle specifically, and you direct Arabin to it. And Arabin, you pull it off the wall. Hey, Arabin, two, two to the right. That uh, that one right there. This one on your right hand. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's something up with that one. You pull it off the wall. It is unlabeled. The wine appears black. However, as you look at it, you see there are kind of scintillating lights inside. Almost like bits of starlight are peeking through the bottle. Okay, this bottle's whimsical. <laughs> oh, you found something. You found something. That's great. Um, don't do anything crazy. We're coming. I'll wander over there with, with Ignis with some light. I come from party people. Does, do I, uh, you know, dwarf, dwarf stock, halfling stock? Do I recognize this at all? Uh, not immediately. Do you, uh, what do you want to roll to see what you know uh, about it? I, I, Ryan, want to know. Uh-huh. I, Ryan, think I know. Can I make I... a Ryan check? No. No, you cannot. <laughs> I would... That is explicitly metagaming. <laughs> <laughs> but I have it written down on my paper here. I have a plus seven to Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> um... I, I, I think Arcana, because this is... I, I detected something magical about this. 
Go ahead. So and roll. if I can roll that, Absolutely. see if anything comes to mind. Absolutely. Uh, that's an 18 on the die plus six. What is that? A 24? More than enough. You know, Good this man. is the wine of stars. Ooh. Tell me more. Uh, drinking this magical wine will give you a natural 20 bang. I fucking knew it. it <laughs> Ryan is. and I both were just like, ah! That's that, that's that good, good grain ore wine. It is. Holy shit. Hey, be real careful with that bottle, my friends. That's some, re like, like, wine can already get pretty expensive and rare. That is on the, like, upper end of even, like, magical wines. Well, do we, do we keep it? I mean, fuck. Do we pour I some out and replace it with water? I want. <laughs> you have black spots. Oh, the parent liquor cabinet special. Hey, Chase, is this a great time to bring up that I'm proficient with forgery kits? Uh <laughs> I am very good with liquids. Can I brew some tea that looks like this? We we I do a little bit of artificer magic and mix some like suspend some oil in there to like give it that light refraction you know how this works you pitch me the bullshit and then we see how it goes oh god that's really tempting but weren't we just talking about not making a powerful enemy and taking taking this man's very powerful very rich wine would make us a very powerful enemy it might if it's that special he would probably only break it out for a special occasion please put it back nope 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 we know what that is nope nope put that back put it back nope put it back wipe off your fingerprints we put all the other stuff back we shouldn't even be up here we're gonna have to tell him that we weren't up here yeah Arabin, as you are wiping the fingerprints off a frantic voice comes in over the comms Hey guys, um, how's that? Uh, how's that last place looking? Oh shit! Someone else talk to him. I I don't have the heart. Well, see, here's the thing, Dieter. There's not much up here. It's kind of empty. Okay. I'm sorry, Dieter. I thought you said this was gonna be where we were gonna find answers. I didn't say anything like that. You were the ones who said that you wanted to look in one more place to see if you could figure out what the hell is going on. Dieter, if you've got like. Any more crazy ideas or thoughts or other places to check or anything that you're like, oh, I don't think that's right, but maybe it would work. Like, this is the time, my dude. You don't think I haven't turned this entire place over and over and over again over the past, I don't even know how long it's been now. <laughs> I don't know where else anything could be. That's fair. It's just Dita. You're just one person. I know, right? And and, and your 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 brain isn't working quite like you want it to. So maybe the three of us would be able to see something that maybe you couldn't. That's all I'm trying to say. Persuasion check. Nice. That is a natural twenty for a total of twenty-seven. Woo. Okay. Okay. All trade is tricky. I've known it since the moment I met him. I know that much. He is, he is conniving. And he is cunning. And I mean that as an insult and a compliment. You'll know at the moment you meet him. He, he's got a lot on going. He's not going to be sloppy. And I knew that going in. Whatever it was he didn't want me to know, it's not going to be laying out. And it might not even... It might not even be here. There may just be nothing here. I don't know where he lives, presumably somewhere in the seat. Maybe it's there. But this is the place where I have power because I've got I've got the control stones like I, I can control the Magicatronics, at least the ones that are left. But that's what I've got. That's all I've got is just them. But they don't work outside of the bounds of the park. So it's not like I can take them with me. But there, ne there has to be there needs to be something. Hold on one second, Dita. I've had a thought. Let me just uh, check with the guys real quick. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. And we're okay. not we're not giving up quite yet. It's okay. Okay. Uh, and then I I put the mm -hmm. stop the telepathy, start the talking. Um, mm -hmm. Arabin, did you hear that? I'm one of the guys. <laughs> so proud. <laughs> you know, it's a, a he, a she, and a they walk into a bar. They're all dudes. <laughs> 
You ever been to the Midwest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely place. Everyone's quite nice. There's a lot of corn. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> my thought is, I don't, I don't like not being able to help Dita either, Hopper, but I don't I know. know what more we can do. We can go back to Yakov and say, hey, look, we found it, and we can, you know, let Dita have a heads up here that, you know, he can he can run and we'll tell Yakov later in the day and Dita gets a head start. That's basically the best I've got. Yeah. Unless. Yeah. If the answer's not here, which is possible, right, I would have assumed it was here. I don't really want to go breaking into estates, right? That seems like yeah. a whole other level. It's one thing to find an answer here in the park to help Dita and... Right, or at least get Dita some closure or something. I don't want to go breaking into other places. I hear you. But what we could do, and I don't know that I'm saying I want to do this, but we could leave, sleep for some hours, and then go check in with Mr. Yakov sometime in the afternoon, tell him we think we made some progress, but we're going to go back again tomorrow night, and maybe we can ask Mr. Yakov some questions, get a little look around. But then if we do this, if we extend this out, if anything goes wrong or he gets screwed over, we are the first people he will point fingers at. Right now, we just have an answer and potentially an ally. And we can stop this right now. And that would be the prudent course. Yeah, at the end of the day, as loath as I am to admit it, this this ain't our primary responsibility. This is we're making a buck. Like, uh, Chase, when are the... Isn't our crew isn't the outrider crew like going back to bearing like tomorrow within the next day or two we could go tell the high captain we need another day to finish a job i don't really want to i'd rather not spend another night in this park could we turn Dieter over to the outriders give him someplace safe to hell could we take him back to bearing try to get him under our, our jurisdiction i don't know just try to find him someplace safe where maybe yakov won't come raining down on him I don't know that if we're going to ally with Yakov, though, I don't know if he's going to be one to want to be working together. In right. That case. And, and Dita's uh, mental capacities are not fully there. Who's to say he couldn't, um, you know, regain his his it's clearly impressive skill set. Right. But, you know, the brain is not something you can right. fix in a day. Could say Especially that. Could tell Yakov that since this was an outrider mission, that the outriders can deal with the culprit in whatever way we want. We could try. That would be a pretty big card to play. I don't think they have quite that much pull here, and Yakov seems to be fairly important. But maybe if Yakov only wants the problem solved and it isn't personal to him, but this feels personal. Cecil, go ahead and roll me a history check at advantage. Okay. 16. You know that whether or not Arabin actually knows that this is a thing or not is kind of irrelevant, but the Outriders utilizing culprits is not something that is completely unknown to them. It has been decades. Like, that practice kind of predates you to a point. Um, but historically, that is absolutely jives with things that the Outriders have done in the past. Um, taking people who would otherwise be sent to jail to, you know, into their ranks and giving them that kind of rehabilitative home. Um, That's great. That's great. Awesome. All right. Real quick brainstorm. Uh, let's come up with a different way to uh, phrase this than take the black because that's where my head is. Turn him into, we're turning him into, into a CI. We're turning him into a CI? Sash him. We could sash him. So actually, sash. okay. Ooh. Crushed it. So actually, Arabin, um, we could sash him. What does that is, mean? It is a practice that has fallen well out of practice, but is still legal and in theory would be recognized. It would take some doing. But um, basically, um, sometimes the Outriders had need of people with particular skill sets who you know, may have done some uncouth things and rather than letting those folk rot away in prison or wherever else or face whatever punishment, it made more sense, it was more practical to put their talents to use as outriders. They could, you know, take the sash and serve out their term 
and then become fully fledged members once they had, you know, worked off their debt to society, so to speak. Um, some never did, some fled, some were turned back over to prison, uh, and the practice has just kind of fallen out of real practice. But it is possible. It would be a huge risk, and I don't mean to hop on the man's mental faculties, but he's had a lot of his memory wiped, and he doesn't seem completely sane. So I don't know if the first time we want to do this in 68 years is with Dieter, but <laughs> I'm saying there's an option. This is not a call we can make. Ooh. This is not a call I can make. Right. It's we convince him to show up to headquarters in in the seat and plead our case to the to the captains. Yes, it would require the counsel of the captains. It would take several of them, and they would have to delve deep into the history books to find, you know, the correct rituals, uh, paperwork that needs to be filed, who needs to be made aware. I'm not sure if there would be remuneration to Yakov for any of this. Like, this is this is a lot. And Cecil starts to smile a little bit. This is so much paperwork. I was more of just <laughs> saying that we tell Yakov that's what we're going to do. And then we set him free. Oh, uh, rather than take him with us? Well, but then we're lying. But he won't know that. If we lie well. That's, we that's, could ask Dieter. That's fair. But could, So my concern, Erebin, is if we say we're taking him and then we let Dieter go, if Dieter does anything uh, uh, recriminatory or to get revenge further down the line, it is the outriders on the line, and that is not a great thing. So it sounds like... We either try to bring him into the fold, or give him a head start, cut him loose. Yep. But yeah, I don't think. Hopper, can you get a? Could you give us your honest read of Dita from a, a, a professional standpoint, from a creative standpoint? He's clearly capable of great works. How how much are we talking about? How valuable could this be? Honestly. I've been with the Outriders for probably pushing five years now, and I've been working on Ignis for most of that time. And y'all only just saw me get him up and running. Now, are the Magicatronics as inherently... There, is, it, is it one and the same? Not quite. But... He has very clearly demonstrated proficiency in construct work. The Magicatronics, you know, even the the ones we haven't fully encountered yet, like, they, they show a degree of, of sentience and independence, which, like, that's nothing to sneeze at. And he made f a bunch of them. Not to mention the June bugs. Not to mention he's probably got his hands all over, like, the amusement wheel and the booter scooter. Like, not even just in terms of the magic, just his mechanics, his engineering prowess, like, that's nothing to sneeze at. I don't I don't feel shame in it saying that he's probably a much better, longer working, more experienced artificer than I am. There's a reason that Yakov picked him. Can you share your workshop with him? Ooh. Because that's what we're speaking of, because he can't stay here. He'd have to come with us. We're the ones vouching for him. It's a pretty small space to begin with. <laughs> it's Hopper sized. This is what we're talking about. I mean, we could probably use him a lot for delving into whatever we found underground out there. He could be helpful in creating and exploring and solving problems. Um, but we also don't know how much if, of the skill set he still has left. If he gets his head right. If he gets his head right. Shit. I don't see a way we all win here. I hate to keep bringing, throwing rubs into the problem, but didn't Dieter say that he has the control stones for the Magicatronics? So there's that too. Um, and if we tell Dieter to run, I would not be surprised if he uh, set them no, all he... to Havoc mode and then ran. Or even, even best case scenario, he just leaves with the stones, then the Magicatronics are still a problem. No one can control them. Shit. Shit. This is a sticky one, gang, huh? Hey, Chase. Yeah? You proud of yourself? 
Very. <laughs> Gave y'all a capital Q quandary to work with. I have another option. All right. We can wash our hands of the whole thing. We can walk out. Say we didn't find anything. Well, we can walk out and say we were attacked. We we searched thoroughly. We were attacked by one of the animatronics. We uh, destroyed it, but couldn't. But uh, and just leave and say we're not dealing with this. This is too much, too dangerous. They need some specialists, real, real specialists, to go in there. You can say that the magicatronics are hostile, but that's it's not wrong. The magicatronics are hostile at night. It's not wrong. As much as we got. We explored, they're hostile. It seems like there's someone behind it, but I don't like that either. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Now I realize I'm an ideas person and not a talker, so I hate putting the idea of a a persuasive argument in y'all's hands when I'm the one coming up with it, but hear me out. Alright. We tell Yakov everything we know. It's Dieter. Dieter has the stones. Okay. You think there's any you think there's a snowball ch- chance in the hells that the two of them are able to reconcile? Does not s- that we tell Yakov that hey, here's the situation. You've been treating your head artificer like dog shit. And if you don't make good on this, he's going to tear your park to shreds. There there is there anything there? That's the only way I can see this working out is that the two parties at fault actually fucking talk to each other. It seems possible, but we don't know Yakov enough, and Dieter's so fragile. Yeah. Dieter wouldn't even know the right things to say because the his his memories are that's gone. That's the best that's the best I got. It may just be Yakov meeting those magic metronics in the worst way. <laughs> <laughs> last point, last idea. We know where Dieter is. He's in the other world fair. We could jump his ass, take the control stones. He's got a June bug. He'll know we're coming. Not if I can re- if I can get into the system. No, but as soon as he loses control of the June bug, he'll know something's wrong, and he'll probably sick all of the magicatronics on us. That's what I would do. I will say. Pretty much everything you have mentioned is a functional plan. Yeah, we know. Yeah, Chase. we know. <laughs> just like, none of yeah, them plans. get. We just hate all of them. Yeah. Yes, the thing, they're all great and terrible plans. Yeah. Welcome to Dungeons and Dragons. Convince them to come to the seat with us, and we jump them as soon as we leave the park. Can we get any sort of read on this? Is clearly very personal to Dieter. Clearly. Have we gotten any notion or ideas that this is personal to Yakov? Like he hates Dieter or just that maybe Dieter found out some things that Yakov didn't want him to know. And then if he could go away, that would just be best. Yeah, it definitely feels more like this is an inconvenience that has spiraled out of control. Okay. But you've also never met Yakov. So it's hard to tell. Correct. 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 All right. Mm. Here's what I think. I don't even know if this is Ryan or Cecil at this point. (laughs) We're in that phase. We're in that. Okay, here's what I think. I think that... I think that we have more to gain for sure. Like, the surety that we can count on is Yakov will pay us, and Yakov will support us, and Yakov will sing the praises of the Outriders if we solve the problem of the park, which we have done, and that is a good thing. So I think we... Leave. We tell Dieter we're going to go try to reconcile with Yakov and see if we can get anything more out of Yakov tomorrow, and that we'll be back tomorrow night, one way or another. This is a lie, likely. Tomorrow, today, however you want to think of it, Mm -hmm. we go to speak with Yakov, and we begin with, would you, could you reconcile, could you this, and we could we sash him, and then if that is a dead end... Then we just have to give it, give up Dita, and we tell Yakov Dita's Dita's doing this. It's a whole thing, and then Yakov will send in his people to pull Dita out of the park because we're not doing that because we know how dangerous it is, right? And then Dita gets his revenge. It's not a clean ending for Dita, but but I think it's the series of steps that has the highest likelihood that things work out for the best for everyone. So either way, 
First step is convincing Dieter to let us leave this park alive. Yes, we tell, need to tell Dieter we'll come, we will, we're going to go look elsewhere. We will be back tomorrow night. And hopefully that is true and we will bring Yakov with us. And Yakov will be able to let Dieter go into our custody. And then after that, we do with Dieter whatever we can or whatever we will or whatever he wants. If Yakov doesn't come, we tell Yakov, hey, Dieter's your man. Go in and get him. Pay us our money. We know the problem. Here's, here's the answer. We're not going on a manhunt. That's not our job. That's not what we do. We've, that wasn't what was tasked to us. That's not what we're here to do. And then Yakov has to go in and solve the problem forcibly. And then Dita probably dies, but does get a fair amount of revenge. And there's a certain satisfaction Oof. in it for him. Woof. I can't say you're wrong. People have been saying that to me for decades now. I'm not wrong. Doesn't mean it's great or we're happy with it. I know. But I'm not wrong. So it sounds like this is going to be two nights at Greenlee's. Who's Greenlee? <laughs> God. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, or by giving us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLoudly, Griffin at GriffCold, Ryan at RyanRolled20. You can also find Justin on TikTok at JustJustinMichael, and myself at TQLoudly. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode, and until then, remember that the past can return in unexpected ways. Sometimes you won't even know that it's happened. This has been a Ghostlight Media production.